All right. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm still on the injured list. I can bend my knee. You can't walk on it. It's getting a little bit better. And uh, I'm going to try some uh, obsidian. I got, I got several flakes. And now I'm going to try and make some points. And I want them to be the same size as uh, this one. And uh, I'm going to try uh, <laughs> a little natural tools. Um, I dug my uh, antlers out and stuff. And... You know, it shouldn't be too hard with, with obsidian. It shouldn't be too hard with obsidian. And I got my camera where I can see to make sure everything's going good. And uh, you can see, hopefully, when I come up the pressure flake and when I do percussion. So, now these flakes uh, shouldn't really need a lot of percussion. But we'll... Uh, We'll see. And I'm not wearing my glasses, so I'm trying to be <laughs> trying to be real uh real abo. No glasses. This sandstone, I think it was a hammerstone because I found this. See how it's worn like it was used to brush? And then it's got a flat spot like it was used, you know, on the ends. So I'm pretty sure. I mean, it's hard to believe that it would just wear naturally like that and then two flat spots on the end. But, and it fits. But I have tons of sandstone where I live. I wish I had half the flint that I have sandstone. Now this flake, if you got, it come off of this, I struck it off of this, uh, black butter obsidian and uh, this is generally what I work I don't make them big points I did a few of them just for the heck of it I got my antler tool I got my medium sized uh, bopper thing and then an even smaller size some nice uh, pressure flakers that I got from uh, Steve Nisley Thank you, sir. And um, a nice soft uh, piece of leather that came in some obsidian I ordered. So with that, we're going to give it a go. Here comes the cat. Bobo, come on. She, she's always in the videos. Man, um, see my flake's got a dip, you know, so I got to take this off. And my point is going to be tight because of how that dips on that side. But you know, I got some room. I'm just making hunting points, not uh, not jewelry grade. So if I get the shape and get it nice and even and sharp, then it's uh, good enough. Now I'm kind of pushing this in the back of my hand. And uh, holding at the tip, trying not to snap the flake in half. It's a little funny there. So my knees still hurt. I can't really. Uh, I can't walk more than you know four or five steps. Move you over just a little bit. There we go. And there's a series of flakes I run. And what I'm doing is I'm thinning that side out so I can come back and uh, 
crush them down. Let's grind a little bit. Now this antler, look how thick, this is a white tail. Look how thick that uh, the actual antler is compared to the pith. <laughs> it's very nice. If I get this leather broken, it'd be even nicer. Now, one mistake I used to make all the time was because um, I went from you know, when, when I started napping, everybody used copper. So I used copper and um, you got to abrade a lot more. And the angles are different. You abrade way less with the uh, with antler and the, with the hammer stone the platforms are different they're a lot steeper okay let's uh let's do a little We're going to try Let's see if we can uh, speed things up with a little bit of bellow work. Yep. Ground it too much for that. I don't know if you can see what I'm doing, but I'm putting this on there sideways. So I'm not doing the point. I mean, you can do the point, but it seems harder to me. I could put it on and just pry it down. I'm getting some good flakes and uh, I'm going to keep going. We've got a little ways of still low, still low and dipping away there. So we can come back through. Anybody been fishing? I've been wanting to go fishing so bad can't can't walk far enough to get down to the water and can't drive because I uh, have to cramp my knee and Been off of work since the second of March, and uh, it's not as much fun as a lot of people think it would be. Especially when you're an outdoors kind of person, and uh, you know you're stuck in the house. For the first two weeks, even putting my foot on the ground um, was very painful. And, uh, and we're slowly working our way down. A lot of pressure flaking. I don't have an antler indirect because I broke the one I had. Um, so I got to make one one of these days.
kind of peaceful <laughs> flint napping. See, if you can make your, if you can get a flat flake and it's thin, like once this is, I guess I should keep measuring it so I don't mess myself up, but once this is down to shape, see, I got room, I could lose all that and still um, fit that point in there. So I got a ways to go. be nice just to knock it off but whenever i try that all i do is break break it like patrick blank he just takes a sandstone or whatever and, and roughs it out um, i i just can't get <laughs> I can't get to that point. Um, um, but I've got a bunch of deer leg buns drying, and uh, I'm going to be. Uh, making some uh, bone fishing points for uh, a couple of fishing spears. Hawaiian sling type with a surgical tube and a piece of bamboo and I'm going to hunt frogs and crayfish and uh, wild horse um, um, suckers in our creek. We have uh, we have uh, sucker fish. <laughs> they get pretty big, maybe uh, two or three pounds for you know my little creek's only ten or so foot wide and. And it, uh, has some pretty deep holes in the creek that it feeds into, uh, has some really big holes. You can see we're flattening out. If I was going to make one of them, uh, what is it, Pernalis, uh, they're twisted. It would be a pretty good flake for that. It's amazing how long it takes uh, to just make a, a little arrowhead, even from a flake. And it, it takes me because... Seven years ago, I got cancer, yeah, and I had to stop for a while. And uh, I just started napping again, probably two years ago. So I'm a little out of practice. But to be fair, <laughs> these are the points I make uh, for, I make them for hunting. Put them on a shaft and, you know, I try to make them quickly. But when you, uh, when you think about a steel point, I could take my angle grinder and a saw blade and I could make a dozen steel points and 
probably less time than it takes me to make one of these uh, stone points. So, I need a little, a little hammer stone. I got some up here, some, some new ones. Here's a nice little one. And, uh, I think I picked this up to make paint with because it's, you know, red, brownish red. I'm not taking this off yet because if I break the tip, I want to still have room. As you can see, it's soft. The obsidian's even scraping it. And it's a nice uh, brownish red, or reddish brown. That'll make some good paint. So I'm gonna save that for paint. Just to go back to my other. This is new for me too. Trying this uh, type of pad instead of a slotted one like this. Um, Unfortunately, I didn't bring my uh, new good camera out, so. I have one word of advice to anyone. If uh, you're picking a spot and it don't go, don't just keep pushing harder. Um, and you see that spot was not going, so I came up here and walked down and you know cleared around it, kind of isolated it, and then it went. Getting our shape. Let's get the measure. Now, what I do is I pick. See, this is the the best side. So I pick that side, and I just start chipping this side away. And I'm not wearing my glasses, so. <laughs> you know, no, no cheater glasses. I 
There's something right there. Maybe an ash pocket looks looks like once I get past that, things will uh, work out better. If you're just starting out, some good obsidian is a pretty good way to go. Um, you'll get cut a lot if you don't wear gloves. Sometimes even with glove, yeah, you get cut. But. And you see, having this cupped in my hand, the flakes don't fly everywhere. And uh, I'm starting to get a pretty decent pattern. Yeah, we got to take this little bit of thinness over here down. It's pretty safe if you pinch behind. Especially with this small of a point. But the thing about this is it's super thin. So it'll get weak on you real fast. And uh, you gotta watch with the sharp edges. Because they all want to open up. See, we're pretty flat now. Now we just gotta do the easy part. This is a uh, raw Edwards or Penn and Alice. Oh yeah. And I just take them to this stage until I get my uh, dozen that I need. And then I sharpen them and put them on the uh, four shafts. I'm going to show you how to make them. And uh, then they'll be ready for arrows.
No, I just set up a whole row of platforms there to send some flakes on this side. I'm going to grind them a little bit. Nice. See how thin, how thin we are? Nice and even. Even enough to shoot. It's straight. You look down there. It's straight. So now we just got to figure out our size. So we got to take all this bottom off. Which is actually relatively easy. Let's uh, switch to our our solid base. See, that scoopy shape is just perfect for so many things. Let's see if it'll if it'll grind my paint. Look at that. That's a good paint stone. Pretty heavy. Might be hematite. paint <laughs> love it I think I have one of them that's green too I have to look that look that up Now the thing here, the point is, if you, I'll show you here, it's wedged to where I'm not bridging when I'm doing this. And I'm pushing straight and just popping a little bit so I don't break it in half. see still got a good ways to go
And this is a Madison type of point, just basically a triangle. How long have we been recording? Quite a while. <laughs> Yeah, I just went down through there and straightened the edge. And <laughs> without even really trying, it's it's sharp, sharp, sharp. And then we're going to do the same on this side. Okay, we got this side nice and straight. We got a little bit of straightening to do over here. And uh, it looks like my flakes can come off of Okay, let's check the room. Not too bad. That's preform number three.
Here's the other two. Thanks for watching. Abo uh, Obsidian.